Welcome to Extra Virgin Press. This is a letterpress studio in Little Haiti, Miami. I am Tom Virgin, an art teacher, a printmaker, a book artist, and now a letterpress printer. And I'm bringing you today a project called Making Space that's supporting the exhibition at the Frost Museum, Place and Purpose, Art Transformation in Coconut Grove. We'll be making a very simple book form. We'll be talking about books and what books bring us. So you just watched C.B. Sherlock's little short film about making a book and you saw several of her books. You'll probably be relieved to know that you don't have to do that in your first try. I'm gonna give you a sneak preview to your book so you know roughly what size images you'll be using to make a book like mine and how much text you could put in if you chose to. I'm making a book, I'll show you my book. This will give you something to go on for your first book that you can show your students and you'll have two examples, mine and yours. So the book is six by nine. A four by five image will fit on the page with some room to spare which will be easier for you to print and fit on the page once you open up the book. If you have a four by five on each page, when you do your text, you'll have maybe three or four lines of text. You could print it on a large format printer and put it on the computer, or you could just hand letter it. The same here, and all the other pages are the same. Traditionally on the back, you would write a colophon or thanks or something of that nature that talks about your book why you made it, who you are, when you made it, and identifying information about what's in your book and who you are, the book artist. So making a book, the book will have pictures, images, and a picture is worth a thousand words. So you wanna make some time to make this thing so you can do it over and over. Some of the things you can use to put your picture on would be linoleum. This is battleship gray linoleum. You could make your picture on foam, which is really nice. You can buy it at Michael's. There's an art supply store called Michael's in virtually every area of the county. You can use type high linoleum, which I can also print on my press. And you could also make stencils with paper and other objects like that. So when you use linoleum, the way I learned how to use it, was if you cut linoleum and it looks like this, you can't tell the marks in the linoleum that you cut from the background. So I learned that if you take your plate and tone the plate, what you can do is make the area that holds the image darker and the area that you cut lighter so you can clearly see the lines you're making. This also works on the foam. So what you need to do is take a little bit of water, always start with the water, and take a little tiny bit of ink, always the water, then the ink, and you're trying to make a light gray. And you can use a sponge or a paper towel or a little rag, and then you can take your ink and rub it on, and you'll see there's a difference between the two and you want about a 50% gray. If you make it too light, it doesn't do any good. And if you make it too dark, it's hard to see your drawing. So you put this on here. If it comes out too light, you can make another coat. You can use the same thing on here with the foam and put a dark layer on there. It doesn't look as cute as pretty. You lose the color, but you're printing with this and all the color is gonna change to the color you're printing in anyhow. So both of these are toned. When I show you how to cut, you'll see the difference in the plate that's cut with the tone on it versus the plate without a tone. You can't see your drawing. All right, the easiest substance to work with when you're making a print is probably this foam. It comes from Michaels. It's uh, very soft, easy to cut. It's got a paper backing on it and adhesive. And once you cut it, you can stick it to a block and make it type high for the letterpress. Or you can put it on the table and print it that way. You can also 
trace an image like I did right here, whether it's a photo or a drawing, and you can turn the traced image face down onto a piece of this material and use a baron, which is a traditional Japanese printing tool, or a magic spoon, and you can transfer your drawing very easily onto this material. And then go over your drawing with a Sharpie. Once you have the material on here and traced, this stuff you can cut with a pair of scissors. And I've already cut these two. And so you can go back in here and cut this stuff and everything you cut away will be white and everything that you leave will print a solid color, whatever color ink you print with. And the wonderful thing about this stuff is the kids can do it, whether they're elementary, middle, or high school. If they're high school, they can go back into it and cut fine lines with an X-Acto knife. So you can do some more detailed work with an X-Acto knife in this material here and stick it right on a plate it makes it flat so it's easy to print.
Here we are on Northwest 2nd Avenue, outside of my studio in Little Haiti. And we're using two products that have solvents. They're not extremely dangerous, but you wanna use them where there's good ventilation. So this is a colorless marker, and you can use the colorless marker to transfer by going over your copy, your Xerox laser print, and you can transfer the copy and it comes right out on your material. This is a ladybug and these cost more money. This is a large can of spray fix, which everybody uses, but it has to be well ventilated. And if you use the spray fix, you can do the whole piece and make your transfer and get your image over the whole plate. And this is the ladybug image. And this is the transfer. This is a really simple way to transfer from a Xerox copy. The next step is to cut the plate. And presumably you've come up with something that you're happy with. And the most important thing when you cut the plate is to have the most complete drawing that you can. If you decide, oh, well, I'll fix it up when I cut, drawing with a knife as opposed to drawing with a pencil is much more difficult. So to have a really good drawing is ideal. These are here because I don't have to use them, but you will if you don't pay attention to what I tell you. Number one, when you cut, you wanna cut with both hands on the knife. And the way you do that is you get some of this stuff right here, shelf liner, and it's soft rubber, and it makes the plate stick. I have this on top of a piece of paper, but the paper itself is weighed down on the table. So when I cut here, I can put both hands on the knife and cut the plate. And I'm starting with the areas that I know are gonna be white. And it doesn't matter if you cut a long stretch. You can cut a little at a time. But you wanna work in the white areas first because they show up the most. And you can see from where I cut here, and I'm gonna move this up a little closer to the camera. When I tone the plate, you can see that the marks that I just cut are easier to see against the gray background. If the linoleum stays really light, or if the other material that I cut on stays really light, it's difficult to see the mark. But when you add in the dark on either side, you can see the marks you cut with. So with this, you work away from your center, whatever you're working on. I usually start with the little areas that are white and I don't turn the knife like this and turn it. I turn the block because as soon as you turn the knife and start cutting this way, that's when you go to the box of band-aids again. Uh, if you just remember to turn the block and look at what you're doing and have a, a your fingers away from the cutting, you'll save yourself a lot of heartache and finger ache and anything else you hit with that thing. So once you get the little areas done, you can go back in and clear with a bigger knife. If you only have one size knife, then you have to just take your time and work a little bit and wait a little bit and work a little bit and wait a little bit and always move the block. So as long as you're turning the block, cutting away from your hand, figuring out where all your values are, I've got a big light background here. So now that I have this mark around here, I can cut right up to the mark and you want to overlap and you kind of have to make sure that it's fairly smooth unless you're trying to get 
a texture in the, the cuts. And the marks that stay behind between the lines where you cut are called chatter. Kind of like me, I chatter a lot. Mostly cutting has to do with safety and you having a drawing that really makes sense to you. So now inking and printing. Inking is necessary to print, but too much ink will ruin a print. So you put up a little bit of print, a little bit of ink, and you roll it out on a piece of glass or a piece of plastic until it's smooth. If you get too much ink on the glass, then you'll, you'll flood the plate. And you might have to pick some up by pulling a little strip out there and rolling it out again. When the ink is just right, you'll hear the ink and it will sound like a piece of duct tape coming off a bear's butt. Not really, but you get my point. When you get your ink, where there's a thin coat of ink and you pick up the brayer, the roller or brayer, every end, because there's a circumference to the roller that's finite. And if you roll back and forth, back and forth, you roll ink on and ink off. Then you get a clean sheet of paper. You put your plate down. You roll up your image. Replenish the ink as necessary. You turn the ink or the brayer upside down. You put another piece of paper down on top of the paper you have. I am using newsprint, the cheapest paper in the history of the world, also the best paper to proof with. The proof is what you call the first print. And I'm using my famous magic spoon, a wooden spoon. Some people use a brayer. Some people use a bar end, a bamboo wrap disc. All of them do the same thing. And you wanna go in circles and go in circles and go in circles and go in all four directions. And when you're finished with the print, you carefully peel it off. And you can see I got kind of a light print there. So I'll make another one. The first one's called a proof, and what you do is proof if you did it right. That's why it's called a proof. The original is the original. No one ever sees it. That's the plate. The part they see is the print, which is the second generation of what that image came from. One is the one that you photographed or drew that went onto the plate. Next is the one that they cut. And this is the one that everyone sees. Now, when I do this with the big presses behind me, the press inks automatically and it distributes a thousandth of an inch of ink, which is way better than what I'm doing right now. And the other wonderful aspect of using a letter press is that the better the press holds the block in, in place and the ink is put on by the rollers and the pressure of the rollers against the bed of the press is also fixed in pressure. So every image, every impression off the plate is exactly the same. And this one's better, but you can see I still missed a spot. I'm out of practice. Because now I have a letter press. So usually it takes a couple proofs before you get one really great print. Now I'm gonna print this 
to say goodbye for this segment. So you'll see one thing that I told you before, and it will make more sense to you now. This is one of the favored community partners of Extra Virgin Press. But it's also an opportunity for me to show you what happens when you print text. And now you see the reason why I have to put everything backwards on the block. So this is how you print. And if you print a lot, you print really well. If you print occasionally, you don't print so well. I start out with an idea, and the idea is the same idea as this exhibition. It's about Coconut Grove, and it's about the idea of making space. And the content in my book is my neighborhood. The things inside the book that I'll show you from the museum are things in my neighborhood that are part of my life. Uh, the things that I have to figure out about that is what sequence do I put them in. And for the last book I made, or the book I'm making right now, I made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen mock ups on the way to making a book. So there's a lot of things that get cleaned up along the way. These are finished books that were made by my students that are a different kind of book. The name of this book is A Cronenfold, and these are great books because you can make a book out of one sheet of paper, and all you have to do is make one cut in the sheet of paper, and you end up with a book. And these, when these, these books are the same form that you're gonna use, and you're gonna take your paper, which I'll show you now, it is in your handy dandy book making kit. And you're gonna have a template that looks exactly like this. This paper is exactly the size of what you're working on. And you're gonna fold the paper and make one cut. The name of this book is a Cronin fold. The size of the paper is 18 by 24. The paper that I use for my book is slightly smaller because I'm using paper that fits on my press and I'm printing with the Vandercook 4 Proof Press and the KP13 Challenge Press. So this book folds in half, folds in half, folds in half, folds the long way, and then you take the book And this one's already cut. And you fold it up. And it makes a book. And we're gonna fold this one and cut it. I put the marks on this so you could see how it comes together. And now I'm gonna fold this without marks so you know you don't need a ruler. When book people make books, they don't wanna waste paper. They don't wanna cut paper. The paper as it comes from the factory is all the same and the paper that we cut is not. So I'm going to line up the corners here and I'm going to push it down and I'm going to take my bone folder and fix the crease here. Then I'm going to take the paper and fold it back to the center again and crease it again. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And then I'm going to fold it the long way. And when I fold it the long way, I will have all the folds necessary to make a book. And all I have to add is a short cut and my book will be complete. And you're gonna have more than one sheet of paper. And as you already saw from 
my pile of mock-ups, there are several iterations of this book that will need to be made before you look at your book as a finished book. So these are easy to make, and you make it over and over again till, till you get what you want. So this is the book form, and I'll use the bone folder once again to push down my creases. The paper you have is a little bit lighter than this paper, so it will fold slightly easier. And the same as this book, one, two, three, four spreads or eight pages. And when you're working on your book, in order to understand it a little better, if you write the page numbers on your first mock-up, cover, one, two, three, four, five, six, oops, yeah, that's right, seven, and I cover was one. So you have a back cover, a front cover, and the pages on the inside. This is a Cronin fold. This is your book form. You will be taking an empty form and filling it up. The part that fills it up is your idea. My idea was my neighborhood and the things in my neighborhood. And there was more than enough for a book because I've been making pictures about my neighborhood for 